society's problems, societal problems, society's problems. Uh, and I want to talk about just the focus on specialists. I want to do just a little broad brush of that. I know there's more deep dive into this whole ordeal, but maybe let's get, get you thinking and um, really put in your mind to where are the specialists in my life, what are the specialists that um, I look to or, or I'm told to look to for um, answers to questions I have or <laughs> to guide me or the specialists that I should follow for whatever reason. Whether you think that, whether you're told that, whether you have to because you're in college or school, your government um, indoctrination camps called K through 12 or, or whatever, or some coach told you or your, a friend told you or, or you saw it on TV or you saw it on a podcast, whatever. Just think about this and just ask these questions. And when I do a few examples, a few stories, <laughs> to really get people thinking and put a little more reality on these things. So um, doctors, when I was younger, and I, I know I talked about this before, um, I went to the doctor, I broke my, my hand, I went to the, the doctor that I'd always seen, and that doctor performed, I mean, the x-ray sent me to that, get an x-ray, came back, looked at it, yep, broken, fractured, whatever, and you need cast, so he had you know his nurse bring the stuff in. He did the cast, all that stuff, and I went to him. They have it checked all the time, and voila, once it was done, done. Nope. Um, he cut it off. That was that. End of story. Good to go. Checked it. You know, had another X-ray to make sure, and, and that was that. So that's how it was growing up. There was no specialist. Uh, now when my children were growing up. My one son had um, bro broken his uh, wrist, well, actually twice, and both times <laughs> went to the doctor, and it was a little different because he had done it one year when he was little, and then a few years later he did it again. And um, the first time went to the doctor, and, and the doctor we'd had said, okay, yeah, well, we will, I'll send it out, we'll get him x-rayed, and then him come in and look at it. The same, the, the doctor that we looked, our family practitioner, our GP, um, looked at it. Yep, it's broke. So he called, you know, nurse in, brought the stuff in, wrapped it, did all that stuff that you, they did when I was younger, and that was that. And then, you know, had it checked up and taken off when it was done, and, you know, had the uh, x-ray done, and came back and checked it, everything's fine, and that's that. That was our GP, our general practitioner, our family doctor. A few years later, broke, as I believe, a wrist again. I thought, was it on the same, I thought it was on the uh, different, the other arm, um, as a first time. But anyways, went to, we had a different doctor now, because that doctor had moved on. But anyways, we're at the same um, setup, the same location, the same clinic, and um, just the doctor from the same department, just we had this one, and now, well, yep, we'll get an x-ray, okay, yes, it is broken. So now you're going to have to call um, this number or get, get this specialist if she's still here today. Um, she'll have to reach out to you or if she's still here to stop by her office on the way out. Schedule an appointment. <clears throat> so I, I was like, okay, I don't understand that. But so sh she wasn't in because she had left early that day. Uh, one of her helpers said, okay, well, all you need to do is, well, we'll help you. I think there were there were a care, care uh, something they called them. Um, I'll give you the list of the locations closest to where we live, closest to where you live. And through there. Uh, we can call and see which location is closest. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I was like, this is crazy. And um, I said, okay, well, the closest was, I think, 50 miles away or 45 miles away. And I said, well, all right. Well, I couldn't get in for a few days. And I was like, well, that's not going to work. Well, then you could get in the next day uh, to a place that was, oh, jeepers, close to 70 miles away, I think. And I said, well, I'll just do... The, the one, a couple days later, 
It was closer, plus I know the area better, so that's what I do. And we had to go there, and we had to go see a specialist. I forget, I forget the specialist's name. And, um, and then there, then they took another x-ray. They looked at the first x-ray, then they took another one. And then he did a whole bunch of stuff, talked about things, brought someone in, I'm guessing his nurse, wrapped it in a cast. That was all said and done. And then we had to leave. And then we had to make another appointment with him to have it checked. And then, yeah, it's healing like it should. Wasn't ready yet. And then a third appointment with the specialist now. And then that time could cut it off and then take another x-ray to, to check it. And that was that. That specialist costed thousands versus the hundreds that the GP costs. They both did the same thing. In my opinion, the GP, general practitioner, the family doctor, was way more efficient, less time having to see them, and it costs less, and less people are involved. Why is that? Why did everything have to get into these small boxes? Sorry, to deal with an, uh, something going on outside, but anyways. Um, Back to what I was talking about. Why, why does everything have to be in these small boxes or these specialists? Whatever. Um, like I said, just my take on it, just for that one little circumstance when my son broke his wrist and when I broke my hand back when I was, you know, this is years ago, high school age. Um, what was wrong with not having all these specialists and all these other people involved? Nothing. Really, yes, there are circumstances for specialists, maybe um, for brain surgery or stuff like that. But for something that my doctor had done in the past and my child's doctor or our family doctor had done in the past to a few years later, not going to happen. You can't do that anymore. You need to go into these little compartments, little special list things where it costs more. There's more people involved. And the same thing's done. The same thing happens. There's no more benefit for the customer or the patient just for the insurance companies and the pharma companies and whatever else is involved in Rockefeller Medicine. But anyways, um, that's, that I'm just trying to do broad scope on this. So that's one deal, just talking about specialists. So now I want to go to uh, financial advisors. Financial advisors. Think of it this way. Everyone's like, well, you need a financial advisor or because you're a financial advisor, you, you can give financial advice. If you're not, you cannot give financial advice. But let me tell you what I know about financial advisors. This isn't financial advice, so don't misconstrue it as that. I'm just telling you my experience. Financial advisor, they primarily deal, not all, not all, but most of them primarily deal in mutual funds or some sort of product like that. And then they have their their group, whatever they work for, you know, we'll call it Bob and Gloria's financial advisor, you know, growth company, whatever. So you have a financial advisor through there, and there's maybe another 20 or 30 that work there besides your advisor. And then um, every now and then they have all these products that they're, they're due to offer to their clients and they have these meetings and they have these weekly things or monthly things or quarterly things of these meetings and these powwows. And then every now and then, someone from the outside comes in and says, well, now here's this new product. Whether it's coming from a bank or some sort of mutual fund or some sort of conglomerate, whatever, it doesn't matter, comes in and just says, okay, this is what we have new to offer. <coughs> Excuse me. And these are what we would like to see you pushing more to your clients because we think it will help them in these aspects or whatever, however they, they say it. Um, I, there's people that were financial advisors that talk about this all the time that you can find uh, online to look, look into this if you want to look a little deeper or read about it. But anyway, so, all right, so that's what they know. These financial advisors don't really look into the stuff themselves aren't really involved with the stuff themselves. And they do have meetings with their clients. Maybe it's twice a year, maybe quarterly, maybe once a year. 
the one I had, wanted to do it twice a year. We only had a really meeting like once a year, sometimes not even that because of, you know, busy life, that kind of stuff. Um, but, and I didn't, we didn't have them very long because I, I was really unsure and I was starting to learn stuff <clears throat> when we had them. And then as I had learned a bunch more, that's when I severed ties and got out of it. But anyways, he had specific number, specific number of products. And how do you want to invest? Are you more of a risk taker? Do you want to have more chance at larger gains, but it's riskier? Or are you more conservative? Or are you one that just wants to wait down in the weeds and just have really small growth? Or just something in between or partial or whatever? And that's the way it was. And he's like, okay, then I'll put you in these products, depending on what your answers were. And then I'll reach out to you in six months, or unless something changes. Or uh, I'll meet with you in a year, or unless something major changes. So I was like, all right, whatever. And so then I called him quite a bit, because I was really active in this stuff and trying to learn best I could <laughs> back in time. And I was like, all right, I was asking questions, and I wasn't getting any answers that made sense to me. I first asked, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know what's going on. I first asked, um, can I invest in any sort of um, gold mining funds or silver mining funds? Can I invest in something other than these few products that you've shown me to have larger gains? And the answers were no, no, no. And then I'd asked about cryptocurrency, you know, this is 10, 12 years ago. And it was like, he's like, I, I don't know anything about that. I, I just only know what I've heard here and there from people. I would, I would stay away. And then asking about, well, I, I, I know you, you always want to um, keep your money in when it's growing. But as soon as it gets to the top or close to the top, you just want to pull it and put it in something else um, that's more safe or safer. And then when it, the drop comes, then you want to switch and put it back into what you had it in, the high growth. And then so it will grow higher again. And he's like, well, yeah, that's, that's the idea. And I said, well, do you do that? Well, not, no, you're, we're more for the long term. So the funds that you're in is more long term. It's higher risk, but it's higher um, possibility of growth. So that's what we do. We don't, don't really change it around unless, unless something major changes in the market. And I'm like, so you wait till after the fact? Like, the police are great after the fact. Um, you wait till after the fact? Or do you want to do something before or when something's starting to happen and then get out or sh change or shift or whatever? And he didn't really didn't have an answer for that. So I, I really got really worrisome and started thinking even more. So I was like, I got I got to pull the stuff out here because... I'm more active than he is because I'm watching this stuff and involved in this stuff all the time and I had all these questions that weren't answered. And I mean, what good is a financial advisor if he can't give you any advice on anything financial that you've asked? So, and then as I learned more and more, financial advisors, no matter where they're from, who they are, doesn't matter. You give them your money, they invest your money in the things that you think are the best, or they think are the best for your answers. And then if your money gains a ton, they get their fees. They're happy. If your money loses a ton, or gets zeroed out, you lose a lot or everything, and they get their fees. They're happy. So where's their incentive to really care? Their incentive is, Assets under management. How many people do I have underneath me is telling me how, many, how much I'm going to make from their fees? Whether they win or lose, doesn't matter to me. Because if I have winners or losers below me, I'm winning all the time because I'm getting my fees. So I don't care what they're doing. I may talk to you and tell you I do or tell you I'm listening because that's my job. And that's what you're paying me these fees for. But it doesn't matter to me whether you win or lose. It doesn't at all. 
So where's my incentive to help you? Besides, keep you as a client and maybe have you refer me to others or refer others to me so I have more assets under management. That's what a financial advisor is for the most part. I'm not saying all, not saying all, but most. That's what it is. So if you care about it, why would you give your money to someone who's just going to make wealth from you, whether you win or lose. And I mean, that's sort of the same way I think of the whole Rockefeller medicine, you know, they call it Western medicine, but the whole health, they call it health, but the whole, you know, farm, pharma Institute, the, the drug dealers, drug salesmen, that kind of stuff. It's the same sort of deal for the most part. Yes, I'm not saying all, I'm saying most. Just think about this and look into that. And I want to do one more. I just, in the same scope of health, in quotes, nutrition advisors, just think about this. I've I've had a meet one, because my, for one of my children, some sort of growth thing, when he was really young, not getting into that, but they wanted me to meet with a nutritional advisor or specialist or whatever. And I was like, all right, whatever. And then you're sitting there and then they come in and I, I myself am not overweight, and um, I try to exercise as much as I can and eat healthy. I don't eat as healthy as I should, but I eat healthier than most. Um, so I just I'm saying that, and I, I, I pay attention to the things I'm eating. I mean, we have a garden and, and that kind of stuff, and and the vitamins and nutrition and minerals and all that kind of stuff. And so she comes in. Sorry. I'm, didn't mean to say he or she, just came on about it. And that's what it was. They came in, nutritional advisor, and um, says, okay, well, we'll do this and that, and, and uh, what's what, what's your child doing, and what's their reaction to this, what's their la, 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 all these questions. I had to answer it, how I felt this form that she's looking at, and, and then all these questions that they're asking. And, um, and in the end, then it's trying to give advice, and then I'm asking questions, and they couldn't answer them, really. Well, I'm not sure. I'd have to look into that, or I'd have to get back to you. Or Next, when we meet again here in a week or two, then I'll have to have looked into that, and I'll get you some answers on that. And I'm like, thinking to myself, I didn't say this out loud, but I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, what, why are you here? Why are you, besides walking in, you're probably 60, 80 pounds overweight, and you look like you're having a difficult time Breathing when you're walking a bunch. Um, I, I don't know if you have any underlying conditions for anything. This is just my initial reaction. So maybe I shouldn't be speaking like this, but I'm like, nutritional advisor coming in like that. I got questions right now just to that. I didn't ask, ask any of those. But the questions I asked about my child couldn't answer me. That was based on nutrition. And based on health, it's like, really? So you, I, you need me to see a specialist, a nutrition specialist, or whatever they want to call them, and you're expecting me to believe that this is a benefit? If you can't answer any of these you know, layman's questions that I have as a parent, I'm not a specialist. I don't have a PhD in this stuff. Do I care about this stuff, and do I research it and look into it? Absolutely. But that doesn't make me a specialist. You're the one with the title. And if you can't answer this stuff, how are you a specialist if someone who does not have those degrees or that title or whatever has answers to stuff that you don't have any clue about? So that's just my deal. And that goes my same comparison. I've done it in the past. And I'm going to do it again. So I haven't met with all the nutrition specialists that ever existed, no. I've just met with this one, and I've seen another one, and I know, I know I'm know, i a family member with someone else who was involved with another nutritional specialist. Um, not involved, you know, on that level, but just had to see one. And, and they had the same sort of, all of them had the same sort of look to them, you know. Yeah, overweight, la 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 whatever, and... Um, they didn't say anything about not answering questions, but I didn't know what questions they had asked. They might not have been the same ones as me, knowing how first I am, 
not much I read about stuff, health and nutrition, but but still, I'm just like, that doesn't seem right. Because I you go to the gym and you have someone to help you work out. Uh, um, you, you're paying someone. You know, you're, whether you're, you're trying to lift weights or you're trying to get in shape or slim down or whatever it is, um, you don't want to walk in there and then have your person that you're going to hire or that's going to be um, addressed to you or assigned to you look like they're out of shape, they can't jog, they can't run, they can't lift anything, and you're going to take their advice on how you need to get fit so you can look good when you come in looking better than the person that's going to give you advice at the gym? Well, that doesn't happen. But it does happen with nutritional specialists. It does happen with doctors. I mean, that's just a fact. It does happen um, with financial advisors, too. There's many stories out there where financial advisors have gone broke because they had lost this and that and this and that, and they hadn't been taking care of their finances because they were just banking on having assets under management. That's their clients. And once they lost that, they, they couldn't do anything, really, to make a living as well as they were when they were, in my opinion, not doing much. Same goes for K through 12, K through 12 teachers university teachers, that kind of stuff. I mean, not all, but most of these people don't know their, their head from a hole in the ground. They don't. I mean, I've asked them college and even high school stuff. You ask people that who are supposed to be teaching you, mentoring you, above you, you're supposed to get advice from, you're supposed to get answers from, you ask them questions, and most of them they can't answer, they know nothing. And these are the specialists that we're supposed to look up to. These are the specialists that we're supposed to, you know, adhere to. These are the specialists that we're supposed to try to emulate or try to be like. This whole society, the whole society problems of this is because of boxes and specialists. People don't know anything other than they're just benefiting from having people listen to them, whether they know it or not, whether they have a clue or not. But as long as you feel like you have some sort of power, and as long as people underneath you feel like they're supposed to look up to you or look to you, they'll follow you. And that's a problem. So think about this. Just think about experiences with specialists, experiences, if you had experiences before specialists, was there a time with the doctor was different or your whole doctor experience was different? Was there a time when financial was different for you? Um, is there a time you want it different now? And if you do, you gotta do that for yourself. Start looking into things. I know I talked about this before and I, I got videos on some books to look into, but the, the first one that pops in my mind that I suggest is A Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. That would be one of the starting points I'm not saying it's going to answer everything, but it might get you started to think differently, to reset what, what has been instilled or indoctrinated um, for yourself on finances. It's just a stepping point, just a starting point. But look into that, and I'll try to look at some of my other videos that I had on books, financial books, um, and start there. If you have questions, just send me a question. Hey, can you give me a list? Or can you point me to one of those videos that you did? Maybe if I can think of it, when I'm going to post this, I might post those links to that, that I had some books in there, uh, videos on books, um, financial books. But um, if I don't, reach out if you want me to, and I'll try to get back to you. But as always, I uh, thank you for watching. Um, if you like this, hit the like, share, subscribe, all that. And um, stay vigilant. Put yourself, put your family, protect your health, and protect your wealth.